Hello, welcome to the second video on the introduction to proofs. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. Now here, we're going to look at two problems that show off the agony and the ecstasy of mathematics. So not just the feelings of pain of doing math, but also the really fun parts and the things that many mathematicians love about doing math. Here's a question that I first saw in uh, Edward A. Scheinerman's uh, Mathematics, a Discrete Introduction. This is the textbook that I used to learn proofs when I was an undergrad. So the question is this, simplify this expression, x minus a times x minus b times x minus c, all the way down to x minus z. That's it. This is the whole problem. Take a moment to think about it but I don't really expect you to answer it right away. So take as long as you want, play around with it, see what happens. One thing you might uh, be wondering is what do I mean by simplify? And I'm not going to tell you. Uh, it will become clear when you've simplified it. Now, one piece of caution I don't expect you to be able to solve this problem immediately, and I don't expect you to have seen this problem before. So I expect you to have to get stuck a little bit. Um, it's not going to be obvious at first how to solve this problem. You might have to try many things. Um, it took me over a day to solve this problem. So if it takes you uh, an hour, or a day, or a week, or you don't solve it until the end of the course, that's totally fine. But I want you to try it and come back to it um, a couple times. Now, if you've seen that problem before, or if you just want another problem to think about that will show this off, here's a different problem. So the setup is that there are 25 ants on a meter stick. Okay, there's my meter stick. And ants will walk at one centimeter per second. So if you put an ant right here, point it in this direction, it'll walk uh, one centimeter per second in this direction. And ants can either face uh, right or they can face left. And you got 25 of them on here. So you can imagine maybe they're equally spaced out. Maybe all of them are on one side. Maybe they're like one over here and 24 over here. Who knows? And when two ants bump into each other, so if this ant is walking towards this ant, when they bump into each other, they bounce in opposite directions without losing any speed. So if you can imagine that they both meet up here, this guy walks over to the left and then goes back at one centimeter per second in the other way. And the final thing you need to know is that if an ant, say right here, walks this way, as soon as it reaches the edge of the meter stick, it just falls off. So that's the setup. Now the question for us is, is it possible for at least one ant to be on the meter stick? There is a typo here. Uh, is it possible for at least one ant to be on the meter stick after 120 seconds? So this is a question about how long can, an, can there be an ant on the meter stick? So to give you a sense of this problem, imagine that there was uh, 25 ants in the middle, all pointing to the right or to the left. Well, then they would walk, 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 and then after 50 seconds, they would all fall off. So if they all start in the middle, regardless of the way they're pointing, they won't bounce off of each other. They'll just walk and fall off after 50 seconds. So will there be an ant on the meter stick after 120 seconds? Not for this setup. But maybe there are other setups that keep ants on the meter stick longer. I want you to think about this problem 
and come up with an answer to this. And I want you to come up with an answer to all possible um, positions of all possible ants, 25 ants. This question is hard, um, but it is within your skill set. You don't need to know any sophisticated math to be able to solve it. Now, uh, the last thing I want to say about these two problems is that you should under no circumstances ask anyone for a solution. Um, and if you do know a solution, don't share it with others. I say this because the point of these two problems is to give you a chance to, one, play with the problem, and two, to have a mathematical insight, to feel the joy of solving a problem that you didn't know how to solve before. If you've never had that feeling before, it's hard to understand why people do mathematics and why people would take, devote their lives to studying mathematics. So if you tell someone a solution, you're stealing that from them. And similarly, if you ask someone for a solution, you're stealing from yourself. You're, you're, you're making it so that you won't be able to feel the fun of, of solving that problem. And it's okay if it takes you a day or a week or a month or a year to solve this problem. Some of the best problems are ones that we come back to over and over and finally eventually solve. If you need hints, feel free to ask uh, one of your instructors. In the last part of this video, we're going to describe advice for succeeding in this course, a course about the introduction to mathematical proofs. I've taught this course three times now, and uh, there's some common themes that emerge with students uh, and how they succeed and what, uh, what the successful students do. And I don't mean what do the smart students do. Um, those people I don't typically have to worry about, they'll do fine. I'm talking about what do the successful students do, the ones who have had the most uh, learning in the course and the ones who have um, had the biggest change over the course. So the big one is to work on many problems. And here I have a picture of a person working out and a trainer with them. And the th this is very much like an introduction to proofs course. So throughout the course, your instructors and your TAs will prove a lot of things and will show you a lot of techniques. Um, and you're going to follow along with those. And sometimes you'll get stuck. That's okay. But that won't teach you how to make proofs or how to adjudicate proofs um, or how to apply them in different situations. So just by watching someone um, doesn't mean you'll learn it yourself. Similarly, it's like if you watched someone, so if you watched a trainer uh, lift weights for a while and they explain to you exactly what they're doing, that wouldn't make you any stronger. And it wouldn't even make you better at lifting weights. So in this course, uh, the person who does the work is the person who's going to do the learning. So work on as many different problems as you can, say from the textbook or, um, or from tutorial problems or problems given in class. Work on lots of different problems. The second piece of advice is get stuck and get unstuck. So when you're, you're working on a math problem, you will very often get stuck. You'll get to a place where you're like, I don't know how to proceed. And when that happens, that means that you are close to learning something. So every time you get stuck, explain why it is you can't proceed. Is it because you don't know if this polynomial has any roots? Or is it because you don't know what the definition of a monotone function is? write down explicitly why it is you can't proceed. The act of doing that will often tell you how to get unstuck. So for example, if you say, I'm stuck because I don't know the definition of a monotone function, well then your next step would be, look up the definition of a monotone function. And then you'll be able to proceed from there. Solving a math problem is very much like this. You're gonna get stuck somewhere, 
you'll think about what it is that you're getting stuck with, that'll get you unstuck, and then you'll get stuck in a new place later on. And then you'll get unstuck there, and you'll get stuck in a later place um, further on. And you'll proceed uh, through this cycle over and over and over. This is what it means to do mathematics. Um, you're going to uh, constantly um, feel kind of stupid. You'll feel like uh, you don't know what's going on because you're going to be in this stuck place. But every time you get stuck, that is an opportunity for you to learn something. So get stuck and try your best to get unstuck, typically by writing down explicitly what you need. And then otherwise, you might need to ask some people for help. That's totally okay. In the next video, we'll see the next five pieces of advice.